synaptic plasticity means uh, it is the the uh, uh, adaptation of the synapses for the learning so now what happens uh, there are short term and long term changes in the synaptic functions that happens associated with the memory and uh, especially in terms of the uh, storage and consolidation that means uh, encoding consolidation and storage uh, require these uh, synaptic plasticity what are these synaptic plasticity so that means the synaptic transmission is strengthened it becomes powerful it becomes sensitized so or sometimes uh, synaptic transmission is weakened or eliminated so this plasticity is both strengthening and weakening or eliminating eliminating particular neurons particular synapses or uh, adding or uh, uh, enhancing the, the synaptic activity there so now this is depends upon the uh, experience or uh, the requirements now i have just put certain points here synaptic plasticity include the following the formation of new synapses then the efficiency of the transmission that means a uh, greater transmitter release uh, just i mentioned the calcium accumulation and sequestration then uh, intracellular me messenger amplifications and second messenger signaling modulation that means uh, they are increased then gene expression so that uh, signaling the receptor genesis or uh, neurotransmitter genesis or a new protein synthesis increasing the number of physicals and the pre in the presynaptic terminal increasing the, the neurotransmitter content and release the efficiency of the release increasing the expression of the ion channels and the uh, neurotransmitter receptors so that means uh, we have in the synaptic plasticity the synapse become more efficient it has a more number of uh, uh, neurotransmitters stored in the vesicles and it can release it faster it has become active or it has become efficient and finally in the postsynaptic side there are more receptors and uh, more powerful the response now let us examine that in the synaptic plasticity this becomes one of them the long term potentiation increased wave of depolarization after a stimulus in the synapse uh, there is a after in the synaptic transmission you have a post uh, the the excitatory post synaptic potential now the excitatory post synaptic potential is a, a wave it's a wave a depolarization wave and this excitatory post synaptic potential has a time period now this excitatory post synaptic potential may be prolonged so this prolongation of the excitatory post synaptic potential is known as a long term potentiation that means it becomes a long it usually it it drops down uh, within a, a few milliseconds uh, to second so the post synaptic potentials uh, post synaptic potentials are short lived whereas in case of a learning there is a long term potentiation of this depolarization or in case of inhibition there is a long term depression of the potentials that uh, indicates about the learning and memory so that means uh, if the uh, depression of the inhibitory neurons uh, may help to learn certain components excitation or uh, increase in the depolarization of the excitatory neurons uh, may learn certain things so like that uh, there is a balance of uh, long term potentiation and a long term depression so this uh, long term potentiation and long term depression can happen presynaptically that is the presynaptic terminal or postsynaptically or on the postsynaptic membrane so these will result in increased activity after a tetanic stimulation tetanic stimulation means if we stimulate a particular thing with a greater frequency that is a tetanus so there will be normally the post in this event there will be a greater response in terms of the uh, ltp that is a, there is a post tetanic potentiation or in case of a ltd there is a long term depression there is a, a suppression of the post tetanic potentiation these responses last for a minute to sometimes a, a very long even greater than a minute 60 seconds or now we we move further this is one of the experiment uh, for the long term potentiation 
I've taken it from a, a candle there, candles uh, textbook of neuroscience. So this is one of the uh, classical experiments from the hippocampal slices. This is hippocampal slice. So now in this hippocampal slice, uh, I will not go into the uh, the details of the hippocampal slice. So this is the recording electrode placed in the, the CA1 region. There, there are in the hippocampal slice, we have a CA1 region, CA2 region, and CA3 regions. So now the neurons, the pyramidal cell here in the CA1 region, it has been uh, impaired and uh, the recording are surrounding that we have placed a recording. And when we have placed the recording electrode here and it is connected to the recording device, maybe oscilloscope. Now, in this area, we place the another electrode so that would be stimulating electrode. When you stimulate, when you stimulate, this, this is a safer, safer collateral. So this is a, a collateral coming from the CA3 pyramidal neuron there, sephir collateral, which impinges upon the postsynaptic. This is the postsynaptic, uh, these things, and right? how are the presynaptic, uh, these things. So this is the exon going out there. So now, so now, you, when, when, you, when you stimulate this, uh, so this would uh, make a synaptic contact here, and how that will change. So that is what uh, uh, we see, and see, this is what happens. In the first instance, when uh, when you stimulated that with a particular train of pulses, uh, you get the response, uh, something like that. This is the wave of depolarization. This is the wave of depolarization, this EPSP, EPSP slope, and this is going up and coming down, something like that. So that is the first time. And if you have a, a train, of depol train of depolarization repeated or uh, increased frequency, increased frequency, what happens? Uh, it would become longer, longer and longer. See, at the fourth event and in the fourth attempt, uh, it has become very long. So with the four trains, this is only one train. That means one uh, frequency of one set of uh, stimuli. And uh, two trains is uh, this much and it's going on. It is not uh, for purposes uh, of clarity. It will go something like this. It will go something like this. And in the last four trains, you get you get the depolarization there, increased depolarization. And this is sustained for several, uh, several minutes. So see, look here, this is several minutes, 210 minutes. So that means uh, nearly four hours. 64 to 40 minutes. So that means nearly four hours it is, uh, the, this is a long-term depolarization. So now this is uh, what the experiment, and I'm trying to make you to feel, to elicit early STP, single train, this is early STP. And uh, to elicit the late, these things, the four trains are given separated by 10 minutes. One, two, three, ten minutes. So four trains are given. One, two, three, four, and you get the after the fourth train, you get a late LTP. So this is an early LTP and a late LTP. So this would last for uh, uh, two to three hours, uh, whereas uh, the first one lasts for two to three hours. The, the this is the amount of depolarization, whereas uh, the late LTP lasts for. Uh, 24 hours or more. The possible mechanism of the synaptic plasticity or LTP. So that LTP results in the changes in the neuron, the, the next neuron of which it's contact. So now I, I, I just read out these uh, possible mechanisms of synaptic plasticity. The, neuro, the increased neurotransmitter quantum, increased receptive area or both. So let us see. What happens? This is the untrained or before training. This is the uh, synaptic, uh, this same experiment, uh, what has been done for the uh, hippocampal slice. So you get the uh, transmitters, maybe three moles of transmitter released, and you. this is the way of the postsynaptic potential. So this is the way of depolarization. Okay, this is where it is recorded. So now, what happened here after training, that is the memory. So now, the training is the memory in which the, you see the, the quantity of transmitter is increased. So you have five moles. This is three moles here. The number of uh, uh, neurotransmitter molecules are increased. That is one. That is what I mentioned here. Neurotransmitter quantum is increased. So now what happens? Even if it is three or even if it is, it, it is, it is only three moles of these things, you just see this postsynaptic site. This postsynaptic site has the receptors. Now the receptor area is increased. The number of receptors are increased. 
So that means uh, this is effectively these three molds effectively interact with the, the receptor area. So that means that would produce a greater response. In this situation, in this situation, maybe one or two molds may be activating. All the three would be able to activate the receptors. And the third thing is, uh, so it is both. So there is an increased, the quantum of neurotransmitter release, increased the area of uh, a receptor or postsynaptic site. So what, what at the end, you get the increased postsynaptic potential and the increased uh, long-term potential. So this is what happens in case of uh, long-term potentiation. Now, then we will go with the next, uh, these things. Uh, uh, this, again, the mechanisms for the synaptic plasticity. This already, we are, we are knowing about this. So this, this is a postsynaptic potential. This has increased the area as well as the transmitter released. So that's one component. The second component, what's happening? It will try to the, make the new synapses. Say, for example, another dendrite is uh, um, coming up there. So now, after, after some time, after repetition, after rehearsing, after these things, you have another synapse formed. You have two synapses two synapses formed. So now these two synapses are activated. So that means a new synapse formation takes place. Then third component, a rearrangement of the, say for example, we have the uh, synaptic contacts here in the beginning, synaptic contacts here when it is uh, stimulated. Now this would, uh, this uh, stimulation will, uh, uh, this, this would, uh, see for example, this, this is uh, uh, unused, this is unused. So now, this is snipped off uh, and uh, this will take this synapse and uh, this is the rearrangement of the synaptic input. So this is the uh, neuronal plasticity. I'm trying to explain all those things. Long-term potentiation initiates all these changes uh, cellularly involving the genetic expression of a new protein because this is a, you require a new protein there. That means you have to eliminate this connection. You have to increase the physical synthesis. You have to increase the receptors. So all these things require a protein synthesis. Uh, that is what the synaptic plasticity is about. Then one more interesting thing uh, uh, you see. So now we have seen the greater physical release for neurotransmitter secretion. The greater number of transmitter vesicles are released. Then greater number of presynaptic terminals I have mentioned. So the so you see for example this is a untrained. So this is learning. Learning what happens? The new new dendrite. This is a dendrite. This is a dendrite. New dendrites are being formed. New dendrites are being formed. So if you are looking at this, uh, there are only three here. There are uh, four coming up. There are five here. There are eight or uh, eight coming up. So that means new dendrites are forming up. When this uh, particular neuron gets stabilized, you see that uh, there are uh, at the end uh, five. So the, the five number, they will be stable. And then you have the, the memory stored in this area. So that means the stabilization of the activated synapses that, that happens. That means it brings the structural changes in the um, neuron, especially in the dendrites. They increase the dendritic carburizations. And these are called dendritic spines the dendritic spines where these spines make a contact with the income, another synaptic uh, button there. So more synapses are uh, formed. So long-term potentiation uh, tries to bring in the changes uh, in the neuron. Now we move on, the memory and the neurogenesis, the traditional view that brain cells are not added after birth. That is what uh, we, we believe. Now it is not uh, true because certain areas in the brain, there are neurons which are still, still um, able to divide, especially new neurons could be formed from the olfactory bulb and some parts of the hippocampus. So these are the storehouse wherein they will, uh, they will um, produce a new, new set of uh, new, new neurons are developed. Now, in this context, uh, if uh, you, I, I, I try to bring in you a person uh, who is there and uh, with an accident, he loses his eye. 
and when he becomes a blind so the visual entire visual cortex is uh, uh, not able to receive the visual information in that way he develops uh, other skills such as uh, tactile skills he tries to understand the entire world either to the touch either to the touch or from the sound so the tactile or the the auditory signals they occupy that space because the visual area the occipital area now is not used or not used because there are no signals coming up so that is a neuronal plasticity neuronal plasticity the tactile processing of information in a person with a blind or a person with a blind is you must have seen many of the musicians are blind they are wonderful musicians so it's in, that means there is a area of the cord that area of the cortex is being used by the uh, other sensory modality which is important for the survival so that means uh, another important aspect so if you see an area say for example the hessel gyrus or auditory cortex auditory cortex it would be very very large in case of a musicians of established level of high level or the persons the paint great painters great painters they have a, a somatosensory the hand skill movements they have a large area the greater area they take up or if you tomorrow if you try to become a great surgeon and that is again a skill skill though you will your area will expand or as a teacher maybe if i have recorded my uh, teaching abilities when i started 40 years back and now maybe i could have expanded or in my brain they expanded the area of representation so this is called a, a neuronal plasticity so new neurons form from the stem cell throughout life at least they are originating from olfactory area and hippocampus this process is called a neurogenesis experience dependent growth of a new granule cells in the dentate gyrus the dentate gyrus is connected with the hippocampus and uh, that will be contributing to the learning and memory a reduction in number of uh, new neurons formed reduces at least one form of hippocampal memory production okay we will move on uh, the neuronal plasticity i have already i have talked about the synaptic plasticity now i am talking about the neuronal plasticity it is the increased number of neurons or glia as i mentioned for a blind or a losing particular area so increased the number of dendrites and spine spines of the dendri or dendritic spines the new synapse formation then synaptic plasticity the efficient synaptic plasticity already i mentioned all these components the formation increased accumulation uh, efficiency anti neurotransmitter content the ion channels the vesicles the postsynaptic receptors and ion channels intracellular messenger amplifications